Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, dear students, welcome back to our sessions with the subject, subject business ethics. Today's topic is about ethics and in international businesses. We have the following outcomes that students, students should be capable to do right after we finish. So the first one is about discussing different ethical issues in international businesses. We need also to explain uh, the MNC and the moral decisions, discuss MNC and social responsibility, Evaluate both um, possible determinants of ethical behavior in these big established businesses and discuss how managers make ethical decisions in, the, in these companies. So in regards to these uh, outcomes that the students should have um, to discuss uh, freely, analyze and come up with his own point of view, we will cover the same point, these points. First, the ethical issues in international businesses. We will talk about multinational corporate power and moral decisions. We will also talk about these companies' uh, social responsibilities and the determinants of behavioral uh, or ethical behavior since these kind of determinants may be different from one place to another place according to the culture and the nature of business. And finally, we will talk about the ethical decision making. So here, the multinational corporations operate in foreign host countries with different laws, different government decrees, different cultural values. So the cluster of these determinants may, may result in different decisions made by these companies. And that is why we need to study the international businesses in terms of ethical background. Now, as we talk about business ethics, we may not only talk about business activities by individual companies inside countries. So we may refer to multinational corporations that operate in foreign host countries. So where the laws, decrees of government, common practice, or level of development are sometimes much different from those of their home countries. And accordingly, the decisions by these big companies may not fit ethically with these elements. So the Lucas status quo cannot simply be adopted without questions by multinational managers, but must still be subjected to ethical analysis. For example, one of these issues here is the wages and salary by these companies, whether these salaries and the compensation system in general fit the laws, fit the government decrees and the common practices adopted by these countries. Now, what are the ethical issues in international businesses? Now, when we talk about ethical issues for companies that operate internationally, so we may talk about managers making decisions that, can be, that must be consistent with different national environments. So for example, the political, political systems where these companies actually operate, legal systems, culture, and the economic development levels. So a company like Total extracting out oil gases in uh, regions or countries like Arab countries must deal with these points. Political system, the legal system, the culture of people or the culture of the country with these countries with these companies actually operate, besides the economic development levels, and based on which decisions as to compensations, number of working hours, uh, promotion should also be relevant. So what is ethical and normal in one environment may not be so in another. So countries can be different in terms of their culture values and legal systems. So the country, the company cannot adopt the same system in one or two, uh, in one country and apply it to other countries. And accordingly, that is why we say ethical issues sometimes may arise from uh, such kind of problem. A legal system of country that is quite good enough for company may not be necessarily so uh, for another country. So ethical issues in international businesses are, are as follows. They arise most often by the context of employment practices. So the employment practices adopted by companies 
can be very different from one place to another. Now the problem is, when a multi or international business adopts the same employment practices in different countries. So this is one of the issues that may create uh, an ethical dilemma or ethical problem. Human rights is another issue. So for example, an employee who works for 12 hours and that not given an appropriate compensation or wages may um, address, may result in an ethical dilemma, environmental policies, corruption, and uh, the company itself, the company's perceived moral obligations to society. Now, this is an example of a decision that should be based, sh a decision should be made by the top management of that company. What kind of obligation do we have to the society where our company actually operates? So the company is utilizing the fortune of this country, for example, fishing, oil, producing, selling products, but what services do we provide to the society? What community services such companies are supposed to offer? Now, this is something that should be accepted and perceived by the top management of these companies. Now, examples of these employment practices, what standards should be applied? For example, do we have to apply the standards of the home nations? For example, if you're talking about Siemens, Siemens is a company that is headquartered in Germany. So if this company operates in China, do they have to apply the practices in Germany or in China? So this is what we mean by home nations. Do they have to use the host nations? Actually, most of the companies adopt the host nation's practices because they're usually easier, cheaper, simple, and sometimes they deal with the economic or economic level of these countries. So if I adopt the home nation, the company may pay twice or three times more than it should pay in the host nation. So that is why companies sometimes adopt more practices uh, regarding the host nation. Some of the times, big companies may adopt other kind of system. So for example, a company like Microsoft, let us say, or Sony Corporation or Toyota may adopt the system of a third company, a third country. So Toyota is a Japanese company that operates in France, let us say, in France. So they may adopt the system of this country. So we have employees from uh, Japan, and those people operate in France. They have the system of the uh, uh, country adopted by France. They can also adopt system by um, German managers, by, uh, let us say, um, American employees, American um, managers. So, the system that fit with the country, with the company itself, in this regard of the country where it operates. So this is what we mean by other. So for the employment practices regarding how much salary should be given, the number of hours, the system of uh, training, development, appraising, etc., they can adapt the policies by the home nations or where the company comes from or the practices adopted by the country where the company works in, or any practices that fit with the circumstances, whether home or host. Now, should the multinational corporate adopt its policies, or should they standardize? Now, this can also be another question. Most of the companies adopt the kind of strategies and standards that fit with the current circumstances. And that is why sometimes we have some kind of ethical issues. So example of these practices, if you talk about employment practices, hiring practices, how do we get employees? Labor relations, diversity issues, number of employees from different places with different backgrounds, 
and employment conditions. So these are examples of issues that require careful thought, without which, without such kind of careful thought, this can result in ethical dilemmas or ethical problems. Now, what are these problems that countries, that companies may face ethically, not legally? Sometimes companies may have an opportunity to generate profits by working in countries where we have repressive regimes. So here, is it ethical for multinational corporates to operate in countries with repressive regimes? Now, what, do we, what we mean by repressive regime is a dictator uh, kind of system controlling the country. So, um, regarding business opportunities, companies may not really think of the regimes as long as they generate profit. Now, this is an example of ethical issues that should be addressed to company. But here, we have some questions as to, as to the investment and the opportunity uh, seized by companies in these countries. For example, is inward investment an agent for change? So for example, a company that moves from Germany to, uh, let us say, another country where the regime is uh, um, not demo democratic, where we have a repressive regime oppressing, for example, minorities, okay? So is inward investment an agent for change? For example, in Germany, we have a lot of business opportunity. The level of economy is good enough for these countries, for these companies to invest. Now, should these, should these businesses move to these regimes? This is one of the questions. Another question, what if competitors from other nations invest and you don't? For example, a company may think that they would not invest in, let us say, North Korea because the system there is a repressive. But if I don't, someone else may do. So that is another question that usually companies may address. And that is why it is quite difficult for companies to take decisions as to that point. Corruption is another um, subject matter that we need to discuss. Now, corruption here, government officials may ask for bribes for a multinational corporate to get things done. Now, for example, one of these things is the license. So a company cannot get the license to start operating business activities in a given country without paying briberies. Now, should company apply to this kind of demand by officials in these countries or not? Of course, this is an ethical dilemma, but some companies may justify doing so by having no other options but paying bribes. But this is still one of the ethical dilemmas that companies should deal with. So, is a multinational corporate manager who agrees a corrupt manager? Now, this is a question. Of course, basically, yes. But again, as we discuss the justification arguments by some people, some of those people may say there is no alternative but to pay. But of course, this is still one of the ethical issues and of course, is a corrupt manager. Should a multinational corporate ever agree to bribery demands? So this is another question. Some people may agree that argue that According to the given circumstances, if there is um, or if the company is imposed and somehow enforced to do so, so they say it's a matter of exception. But of course, this kind of exception may result in harming other businesses or harming customers, environment. So accordingly, these bribery demands are actually wrong and that managers should not agree. Now, regarding the power and the more decision, when we talk about multinational corporates, we may talk about business or huge businesses 
that have the power to affect countries' level of income, countries' economy. So they have huge power, and accordingly, they have more decisions to follow. So multinational com companies have power of a host country. They can affect the whole economic system. They can affect the number of employees employed in these companies. So by doing so, they have power over these host country. So they can move production away. If they, if they do so, the country may lose a lot of employees and the level of unemployment rate will increase. On the other hand, the level of the GDP or the income economic status of the country may also drop as a result. So we're talking about very poor countries. They can be afraid of such kind of practices by these companies. And that these companies will have huge power over these uh, uh, countries. So that is why we say power is morally neutral. It doesn't mean that power is not important, but what's important is that how this power is actually used. So how it is used is actually what matters. So perceptions of how it should be used and of its impact can be different. For example, a company may think of its power as a means of generating profit. This is the company view. While on the other hand, as we talk about the country where that company work, it can be totally different. So the power of this company should be used in providing more job opportunities, reducing the environmental problems, uh, providing more opportunities for other businesses as supporting uh, industries to flourish and to start their own businesses. Now we talk about the social responsibility of these huge businesses. Now social responsibility is actually the decisions that should be made by these businesses as a consideration of social consequences of economic actions. I am operating in these countries, so what responsibilities do I have to these community? So a number of jobs, for example, providing a livable environment without affecting the environment, um, banding corruptional procedures by either individuals in the company or objecting any kind of um, uh, illegal procedures made by some government officials that can affect other businesses or the customers. So that is why we have this noblest oblige Honorable and benevolent behavior is the responsibility of those in power. So why do managers behave sometimes unethically? This is going to be one of the main topics we would dis discuss in different sessions. Sometimes managers may have to deal or behave unethically for the following reasons. The societal culture itself decision-making process, leadership style adopted, unrealistic performance goals, organizational culture, and personal ethics. So we would take about these one by one. For example here, personal ethics can be the reason why managers may behave unethically. For example, the generally accepted principles of right and wrong that the person has can be the result why he or she may act unethically. So for example here, expat violating their personal ethics. Expatriates here are the people working in another country. So for example, if we have Japanese employees of Toyota working in China, sometimes because of the culture and the differences of culture and the rules in China, they may violate their personal ethics. Managers sometimes rely on economic analysis when making decisions. This may, by itself, sound good. But if you do not consider other issues, like, for example, the uh, condition of the work, human rights, the rights of the individuals and the employees, employees as well, 
So thinking only of economic um, analysis when taking decision without thinking about employees, customer, environment, relations, etc., will be of course wrong. So this is another reason why sometimes manager may behave unethically. So they only consider profit without considering other elements. Another reason why managers may behave unethically is the decision making process. So the organization, organization culture that does not emphasize business culture will definitely encourage an ethical behavior. So the culture of the company that, for example, motivates innovation, employees will accordingly behave in that way. Organization culture, on the other hand, that motivates copying and selecting ideas of others, copying the ideas of the others, even patented, would develop such kind of poor practices by individuals. That is why this is an example of how individuals may be affected by the culture of the organization. So culture and decision process are ways that may develop such kind of unethical decision-making process. So the organization culture can legitimize an ethical behavior. For example, individuals who can bring new ideas of businesses that are actually adopted by other businesses can be somehow um, appraised by the company itself. They can be even given some kind of free words for stealing ideas of other businesses. So by doing so, this becomes something legal and accepted by the company, while in fact it is not legal in general. So that is why, that is why, why, why some companies uh, may result in terms of operations with ethical or result in ethical dilemmas. Unrealistic performance expectations. If the company itself expects a 15% increase in sales, for example, so the manager would think only in obtaining and reaching this goal. If the goal increase, for example, or the objectives here are like 30%, this is very difficult to achieve. So we say this is unrealistic performance by managers. So they will do whatsoever means to achieve this rate without thinking of ethical issues. So that is why it's another reason why managers behave unethically. Leadership. We said here, yeah, leadership is affecting others' behavior. And accordingly, the employees will do the same as their leaders. So when leaders act unethically, their subordinates may act unethically too. Social culture, societal culture, firms located in uh, individualistic culture with high uncertainty avoidance are more likely to stress ethical behavior than companies that are headquartered in cultures with masculinity and power distance uh, rank high. So here we're talking about the culture dimensions. The culture can affect how managers act. So for example, in culture with high uncertainty avoidance, so managers are afraid of uncertain decisions. So they try to make the best decision because of such kind of fairness. So they usually stress ethical behavior because they are fear of the consequences of poor decisions. So that is why culture sometimes may affect a decision making process. Now, how can managers make eth ethical decisions? On the other hand, we have discussed why managers behave unethically. Now, there are some steps on how managers may make ethical decisions. For example, they need to hire and promote people with well-grounded sense of personal ethics. They need to build an organization culture the kind of culture that only plays a high value on ethical behavior. They also need to make sure that leaders within businesses 
articulate the rhetoric, rhetoric stories of ethical behavior and accordingly act in a manner that is consistent with that rhetoric. So rhetoric can be a sense or a story that is somehow uh, spreads among members in the organization and promotes ethical conduct. They also need to put decision-making process in place that require people to consider the ethical dimensions of business decisions. Now, dear students, we come to the end of this session. So we discuss different ethical issues in international businesses. We also explain the multinational corporate moral decisions. We discuss the multinational corporate social responsibilities. We also evaluated the different determinants of ethical behavior made by these companies. And finally, we explained how managers make ethical decisions in such big companies. So by this, you have an attachment here, which is the assignment of today's uh, topic, where you have to handle and address these different questions. Thank you very much for listening to us, and see you, inshallah, next week. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.